What if I told you Canyon was gonna be 20 CS down against an enemy jungler on Nidley, and he was gonna die to level three dive on the top lane, and the game looked absolutely losable, but he was doing everything you should be doing to win in season 13, and he does. We're gonna look at how he does it and how you should be doing that, and how exactly we can avoid these kind of pitfalls while doing everything correctly to win every single game. And obviously the meta has seen a drastic shift in terms of how we play the game and how we play jungle. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, replicate it using all the correct steps coming up after this. If you want the best champion data and builds and counters and everything you need to get through the season, Mobilitics is here to help. Much like our redesigned jungle, Mobilitics app has been redesigned to give you all of the best information that you need to thrive before, during and after game. While Riot did remove scouting, Champ Select has been redesigned to give you all of the information on the champions on your team and on the enemy team so you can know which team is stronger, along with gold leads and insane informational trackers in the overlay, you can keep track of your progress in-game to help you hit the targets you need to win. The power spike notifications in-game will mean you never have to worry about messing up again. Leona 6, Roman Gankit, Nocton 6, don't have a push and dive. And so you know ADCs need this, but you know what? They're not gonna use it, which means you can use it and then counter gank and obliterate the enemy jungler. The brand new Mobilitics app has everything you need to improve in Season 13 League of Legends. Click the link in the description below to download and become ascended. And so you will see here on the first clears, we have our runes, we have our elos, we know we're Nidalee versus a Kindred, Kindred obviously dominating the meta. What's gonna happen is we know the Kindred's starting topside and Canyon's gonna do one of the brand new clears. That's actually not a new clear, it's an old clear, but it is a new clear that is being used in the meta to dominate the bottom lane. It is Red Raptor's Krugs into the bottom lane. What is the downside of this particular clear though? Well, if the enemy champion was starting on the top side, much like this Kindred is, historically what would happen is they would just vertical jungle you. They would go over the walls, they would take your top side, and if you had no prio or the gank didn't succeed, you would not be able to actually go into their blue side. The downside now for the enemy jungler when you do this in this season is that you have a 20% damage reduction when clearing the enemy jungler's camps. So you can't exactly flex into vertical when you're just gonna take so much longer to actually clear it. And if it's warded and they see you and it's a nidley, they're just going to collapse on you and you cry and you die. So what you take away from this is please look to do three camps into ganking in a logical way should you play an aggressive jungler. The Kindred was doing Red Raptor's Gromp and because nothing really materialized due to obviously the mid lane and the support ganking the bot lane at level one, they are able to fall back to their blue, their wolves, they can take the bottom scuttle or they can flip to the top side. But what we're going to instill in you this game, hopefully, is the eyes up jungling approach. Not ostrich jungling with a head in the sand, AFK farming, you need to look. So ideally, yeah, we can go to our top side quadrant now Ideally, these three camp ganking patterns allow us to protect one of our sides. But if you see someone on the top side that's diveable, we should go for it. You should attempt it. You should start to learn the limitations of your champion, how to juggle aggro, and how to play around laners who actually don't know how to handle this sort of pressure. And of course, we die from this. This is not the best dive in the world. It's probably one of the worst dives in the world. And despite the Renekton Nidalee combo and we hitting the spear very easily, the Renekton doesn't get the kill, the Nidalee doesn't get the kill, and the Malphite just says, rock solid. Now, obviously, the downside of this kind of hyperactivity early when you try to do these kinds of gangs is that while we do get bot lane ahead we now put ourselves in a bit of a deficit ideally we get the kill here we fall back to our blue side and top scuttle that's fine but the kindred on the other hand now has complete run of the mill control over their camps their sequencing we're already down 12 cs now what did we just say eyes up jungling so yes the kindred mark spawns and blesses us by being on the bottom side so you think okay great i get a top side scuttle i have my blue side to fall back to but we see on the minimap, ah, Kindred is diving my bottom lane like I dove their top lane. You could choose to focus your own econ and your treats from 40 to 20 rather than helping your team directly. But as I said, this is a new meta. We can afford to be a little bit more hyper aggressive early when we're champions that can use the new jungle pets and our kid to catch up on farm pretty quickly. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that because Canyon shows us exactly how to do that. And of course, I've used his strategies for a very long time and had a lot of success with it. So I'm hoping when you combine them with my own strategies, you should have a lot of success in this season as well and obviously in this case we rotate we get kills the kindred is going to die respawn and now most likely is going to want to try and get that next mark which will be on the raptor pit what nidalee is able to do is take it and kite it out obviously the kindred is going to have a lot of aggressiveness here to try to secure this but should they that's dependent on lane prior and exactly how strong you feel against the enemy jungler so canyon does the right thing because we'll have the second spawn krugs the second spawn raptors that we can fall back to on the bottom side the downside is obviously that we're not going to get the krugs now because we're forced to go to the top side due to the kindred's pressure bottom lane rotations and mid lane strategies and mid lane prior will impact this decision and now again eyes up jungler do we really want to have to hold and deal with 
top lane? No. We would love to finally clear our blue side, take those camps off the map and get them to reset at a higher level, that boosted experience level, which by the way is level 5 camps and up, will get the bonus experience buff that we had a few months ago. However, in this case, the Malphite is low, our Renekton is losing hardcore, let's rotate and get a kill. However, what we need to pay attention to is where is the Kindred going to be going and why? Well, you just took their Raptors, which means you know the Mark's going to respawn in another 45 seconds, and there's an RNG crab spawning on the top side. So most likely, knowing that they shoved you from your red side to your blue side, and once they see you there, they were basically going to invade you and try and press you out of your own jungle, as a Kindred should. This is what Nidalee wants to do as well. So the Kindred is doing a good job, the Nidalee is doing a good job, and you can see the pros as the Kindred cleans up the kill in the Nidalee, and the cons as Nidalee dies to the Kindred, and the Kindred obviously gets a top scuttle mark, of having a more hyper-aggressive ganking style style whereby you leave a quadrant on the map for a long period of time versus a Kindred playing a very can I suppress the enemy jungler, use equal and opposite, and then try and hunt them down. This is the kind of stuff I want you to think about. Yes, you can full clear, play around 6. Yes, you can kind of run around and gank as much as a Nunu, much like Canyon's doing here in Italy. But you need to be very profound in your success with your ganks, or you will end up in a very bad situation. We're able to kill the bottom line as you saw, take out Krugs, go to our red. Kindred stole the blue and then fall back to their red side. And you can see, you know, 23 out CS, 45 out CS for the Kindred, it's mounting up. And they're 2 1 0, and we're 4 2 1. We've had good success from the Eyes Up jungling, but we haven't really had the best quadrant clears or optimization sequencing. So to help with a more perfect example of how we'd want to execute farming and ganking in this particular season, I will link my how to gank and farm together video for this particular season. However, the message here is look to make plays on the map, protect your jungles from the side as much as you can. And if you need to give up quadrants and sides to counter jungling, just look to make sure you're making plays on the lanes so that the king is going to feel compelled to do this counter jungling. But if your ganking technique is good, you should have good success. It's not that much experience in the jungle and you can always clean up and catch up afterwards because of the nature of the jungle pets. And you've seen this sort of jungle flow aggressive eyes up jungling approach work again. Instead of sequencing the blue side and worrying about that, we know the kindred was sort of taking us to falling back. So we think, hey, maybe they're going to show up on the top lane here and loop back around. Not the case. I see a free kill. We take the free kill. Go back into the river and now I can fall back to Grump and Wolves and then maybe the Herald. Ah, but kindred is mid lane. Therefore, I need to rotate, counter gank, kill them, get another assist. Now, can I go counter jungling? If you sort of actually paid attention to the CS, remember, press tab. Every time the jungle leaves vision, press tab. Add up their CS. How many camps did they take since the last time you saw you? Where did they come from? Which camps are most likely taken? And then you can avoid all of this sort of running around looking for things to counter jungle because you know where they're going to go. And in this case, they're going to the bottom side, which means we get an absolutely free Herald. And if you know anything about anything, you've been watching the gameplays on my other channel and you would know that we're talking a lot about goon squatting, the Zack video, the Shaco video, looking to gank mid lane so that they can get ahead so that you can form and dive bottom lane. Canyon knows this, which means instead of doing our Gromp and Wolves to finish those and kind of reset, we reset after the Herald, knowing the Kindred's going to be on the bottom side. Yes, the Vision confirms it, but as I said, we don't really need the Vision to confirm it if we're tracking properly. And we move directly to counter gank it. Don't go farming, don't finish your blue quadrant, don't go topside. I mean, you can, you can gank the Malphite, you can use the Herald top lane, but we kind of want to suppress them because they already have like a 30 CS lead, 19 treats to our 27. If you're going to play like this a bit more hyper aggressively and not a bit more slowly with the quadrant clears, as I mentioned, both are exactly how we want to play. It's just called eyes up jungling to look for the next best play on the map at all times. And I want you to think about that and say yes to the opportunities that the map provides you and not no, I need this grump. And now this decision gives us eyes up jungling rewards, which is of course a nice beautiful triple kill. And from this you translate the kills into objectives, keep that kill conversion ratio running and high as possible. We know now that we can actually afford ourselves a little bit of time taking raptors, taking krugs, and in theory you could repeat gank the bottom lane. And you know the Kindred should in theory go to the top side because they were just on the bottom side. You see how we're going with this flow? We try this, it's watered, there's nothing. We see the Kindred go mid lane. They don't really get anything, but they're showing up, which means we can position to counter gank because it's coming to that moment, we're gonna need to use the Rift Herald. And this, my friends, is this one decision, this moment that allows you to take over games because you've put the enemy jungler in a position where they feel like they're in control, but they're not, and that's exactly what I said in the intro. And because we've done the eyes up jungling approach, we see the Kindred going to the bottom lane with LeBlanc. We have top side up, they have Krugs up. What we can do is ignore that mark, that's because of the Viego. What we can do is use our Herald to kill the Malphite and actually get some plates in the top side. The Malphite sees us, he moves on down, we get the kill. The Kindred, getting nothing in the bottom lane, moves to the mid lane, kills the Diego, and in the meantime, we're basically going, great, now what do I do with the Herald? We have to use it. My friends, it's simple. You move to the top side and you place it, and now you think, okay, look, I should in theory stay and take their top side. They probably think I'm gonna take their top side, 
but I know that they think I'm gonna take their top side, thus they probably go and take my blue. You follow? Which means we go and kill them for taking our blue. And this is the crucial factor. When the enemy jungler makes this one mistake, this big mistake, this misposition, because of the pressure you've put on the map for the entire game, now, now is the time we can finally have a good old fashioned full sequence. If you're playing a Hecarim, a Karthus, a farming jungler, I will put out a separate video on how you guys can best succeed in the season, but at the same time, if you just play eyes up with whatever champion you're playing, you will see that we can not only do this extremely effectively, pressure the enemy jungler extremely effectively, but we can also do that full sequence as much as possible, you know, before we need to do eyes up again and cut through, make some more kills, and we've equated and negated that CS lead that the Kindred had. And the next phase of taking over games and basically closing this out is what I've basically lacked a tome for this whole time when people say, how do I close the games that I have a lead on? I'm going to call it now the swoop method. Welcome to the swoop method. This is whereby we stay out longer using an extended sequence, right? We don't go back to base just because we have a thousand, two thousand gold. You keep looking for the next play to be made in the river up. You keep looking for the next play to be made in the river to their jungle. And we keep shadowing our laners every time they overcommit. We make the kill, we make the pick, we take the raptors, we swoop back across the middle lane, we help them push a tower, we go back into the river, we try to take their camps, we kill them if they try again, and you keep chaining this together, fall back to your camps when you need to, but you're always hovering the mid lane, the siege, on the tower that's the next to be taken. Obviously, Canyon likes to push this to the limit in terms of concept and just basically does a YouTube challenge, stacking up like 5, 6k gold. I don't advise you guys to do that, you can definitely base a little bit sooner. But the ultimate goal is here, take your river lead, forget your camps for now, push into their jungle, don't let them get anything for free. If they try and shadow and gank on your team, you're there, you kill them, you keep trying to push that tower down as best you can. Obviously here they're having a bit of difficulty and Canyon will fall. If you don't exactly die here and you still can't get the mid lane presence and you've gone back to base, whether you're through death or through voluntary pressing of the back button, remember when you leave the base here, Take your camps in relation to what your team wants to do. If they're going to try and shove down the tier one immediately and it's looking to be a bit of an ARAM, you can go Grump, Blue, Wolves, and then you're pathing towards them. And then you can see, do I need to cut in and actually shadow the situation as Canyon does? If no, all right, then I can take my bottom side camps and loop back around. You could look to split push yourself and create sort of macro pressure there, but I don't always advise doing that in lower ELO games unless you are insanely strong and potent and force like two, three people to rotate. And then you can kind of either just kill them or, you know, rotate to join your team once one guy shows. Now you have numbers. In this particular regard, the principle is the same as we were talking about. Keep trying to make a pick, keep keeping them out of their jungle, deny them as much farm, as much experience as possible, and they're just going to stagnate. Eventually, someone will miss position trying to make a play. If they send four top to your split pusher, now we can try and really force the issue and take those towers. The pressure will eventually have to go somewhere, and the enemy team just doesn't have the patience, the discipline to actually try and win out these games. That's why it's so important as you watch the footage of Canyon winning this game to ensure you understand the aggressive nature of Eyes of Jungling, but also when exactly to farm and when, you know, you just have to be in the lanes to prevent the fires. Champions that can really thrive in this strategy obviously are your Graves, your Kindreds, your Nidalees, but in the best junglers video, any jungler there, even if they want to sequence and play, can react to hold lanes, pick up kills, can react to counter ganks to pick up kills, take a kill top lane, right, I want to do my top quadrant, but hey, there's something in the mid lane, let me go do that, right. Now I want to go back to base, but they're dead so I can take a Herald. Hey, now I could take my blue side quadrant, but the Kindred's spawning and they're going to dive my bot lane. I should just base and counter gank it and then take the dragon. From this, I can invade their jungle. I can fall back to my jungle and gank bot lane again. You're seeing how the flow develops when you just look for the next play possible before you think about your de facto farming. And obviously, thinking about the farming is important, but with this, you should still have 6, 7, 8 CSPM very, very easily when you take their stuff and also fall back to yours in an intelligent way. Use your standard Baron baits, use your standard Baron fights, and then shove it down and win. Eventually, patience will always win, intelligent pathing will always win, and those who do not panic when they're down 20 CS in a rougher game, especially when they're getting kills, are the ones that are gonna come out ahead. If you want a bit more of a nuanced view on exactly how to counter junglers or the best junglers that you need to actually survive in this meta, the videos on your screen should do you justice.